Our Aqualink 2.0 video is also offered in Spanish. Click the thumbnail below if you prefer Spanish, or hold on for our English version. This is Randy Beard, and I would like to welcome you to our uh, tutorials on how to install an Aqualink 2.0 with the antenna programming. So follow along as the United Pool professional Greg Beard installs this Aqualink 2.0. Hey guys, my name is Greg Beard. I'm here today to convert a uh, Jandy, older Jandy system to an iAqualink 2.0 conversion kit, which will give you the mobile data all on the phone. So basically, what we got here is here's our conversion kit right here. Um, it's the just the normal RS conversion kit, Jandy iAqualink 2.0. Everything we need to do this job today is located in the box. So opening up your box, guys, you will find that there is some important literature. The main thing you do not want to lose is going to be the door hanger, what we call the door hanger. That door hanger has this little sticker right here at my finger, which is the code for the antenna that we're going to hook up to the homeowner's internet Wi-Fi, and that's what's going to operate the system. Okay, so further down into the box, you're going to find your control panel, which we're going to be removing the old one and put Putting in the new one. It's going to be wrapped up in all this plastic. We will unwrap it for you here a little later. And down underneath that part of that box, you're going to find your antenna. So right now I'm going to get into the control box and uh, start to remove what we're going to remove and show you the easiest way to go about this. So what we did is uh, there's a down on the side here, there's one screw. We're going to remove that screw, unlatch the door. Um, Pull the cover completely off, get it out of your way. Guys, so here we go, we're going to uh, we're gonna remove all of our cover screws and um, kind of take a screwdriver over here to the side, pry the battery bay just a little bit, tweak it just a little bit, cover off. Also right now, guys, I notice I put it in service mode. Good thing to note right here is to take, take and make sure that you realize what auxiliaries you do have. Two screws basically hold in the bezel board, which is this board that we're gonna replace is basically called your bezel board. Two screws hold it into, the, in, into there and very simple to remove it. One more on this side. And basically at this point, we're ready to replace this board. So I'm gonna identify my solar valve actuator and my suction valve actuator. And how I'm gonna do that, I'll show you right now. With a quick little zippy tie, I can put this zippy tie right in and around my suction side controller. I don't have to go fishing around to see which one's which. As far as my solar valve, I'm gonna unplug that solar valve and I'm gonna bend it back, wrap it up with another zippy tie. This will save us a little bit of time when we go to plug everything all back in. Um, and I'm gonna break out the new board right now just to show you a couple different features. So on our new board, guys, the, the, biggest, the biggest feature that, that has happened here is our new board basically looks the same. They both look the same. We just got two data cords here. This is gonna support the iAqualink um, 2.0 and variable speed communication to send data to pumps. The other thing that's changed is obviously our spot side remote stays the same, our 10 pin connector stays the same, but they do have a service port here. And then all of our auxiliary relays and intake and suction and return relays have moved to the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna set this back aside. And we're gonna remove all of our low voltage stuff. Also, their 24 volt power right here. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that just in case I cross something up. We don't burn up burn up a transformer. So this this 10 pin connector is is one of the hardest ones to get off because obviously it's got 10 of these pins back behind it. So what I just did is I started in in the groove with a smaller screwdriver back in here to kind of wiggle it back and forth. It basically just pulls straight off. So and there's our 10 pin connector. Now these guys down here, I really don't take my time to to figure them all out other than my filter pump relay. Filter pump relay, I don't want to go chase it back down. So what I what I'd like to do is I stop at this point and I'm going to start plugging them in one for one for one for one on the new board. I'm going to lay this one down.
Thanks for watching the first in the five-part series of the installation of the Aqualink 2.0. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I uh, sure appreciate you watching VAR X1. Click the link and you'll go right to the second part of this five-part series.